Hey everybody and welcome back to another Darkfall VFX tutorial. So today's video we're going to be looking at how to do a hoverboard type VFX shot as you can see in the example here. And the first thing we can do is go down to VFX and choose this preset. Then go ahead and arrange the layout. We don't need these two windows in this example, so I'm just going to minimize this. And now we can open up our video footage by going to open. This is the video clip that I'm going to be using. If you want to follow along and use the same video clip, there will be a link in the blog, so go ahead and download that. And the video was quite big, so I cropped it down to 250 frames. But if your video is longer than 250 frames, go ahead and click this button and then it will just set the timeline to be the length of your movie clip. Now we can go ahead and prefetch this. So this purple bar should fill up all the way. If it doesn't, you will need to go to edit, then to preferences and increase your memory cache limit. So now we've prefetched this, we can actually play through and see how it looks. We're going to add two tracking markers, then a couple of masks and then composite all together and hopefully get some hoverboard type of effect. So let's go ahead and start to track this. As I said, we only need two tracking markers, which will move the masks. So we could use these wheels here. And for the tracking settings, I'm not really going to change much. I'm going to change the match from keyframe to previous frame. And then I'm also going to enable normalize. And that's all I'm going to do for here. So I'm going to press T just to close this. And then over here, I'm just going to change this to the track tab, just so we'll be able to see a preview of the track over here when we add one. So I'm just going to zoom in, hold control and click just to add a tracking marker. And now I want to hold alt and press S, which will enable the search size. If the footage you're working with is quite fast or blurry, you might want to increase this quite a bit so it stops the tracks from failing. Uh, one thing to note, the bigger these are, the longer it will take to track the footage. Anyway, so now I have this, I'm going to track this forward by using this button here. So we can see it tracked forward, but then it stops around frame 173. So if we have a look why, we see on the next frame, if we jump one frame forward to 174, we can see the wheel is going out of shot. So I'm going to go back by pressing the left arrow key. Then in fact, let's go back one more. So I'm going to press left again. So now I just want to clear these tracks that were incorrect. So I'm going to click this button here, which deletes the path after this point. So now what we need to do is offset this tracking marker. So we're going to find a different spot temporarily to use, and then we're going to move back. So the way to do that, if we press G twice, and we can see when we start to move this, we now have this dotted line from this tracking marker to this center point here. If we press G normally, this is what we get. We're just moving the tracking marker, which we don't want to do. We want to press G twice. Now we can see we're just offsetting this. So I'm going to use this area over here. Let's again track this forward. So we can see the tracking marker doesn't fail. It does get to the end. But if we play through it, we can see that this foot actually moves. So it moves our tracking marker. So what I'm going to do is just go back. And we can see there's this little square here, which indicates this is where we offset the tracking marker on this frame. So we go forward. This all looks good keep going and then when we get back here we just want to move this back to this position and again that's because this foot keeps moving around so it will move our tracking marker again these tracking markers are not going to be perfect so we will need to do a little bit of work with the masking it's just to make our job a little easier when it comes to the masking so yeah let's move this back we just need to clear this now so I'm going to press this button here I'm going to press G twice and just move this back here where it was and then track this forward so there we go now we have a better track Again, it's not perfect, but it will do the job that we need. Let's go back to here, since we need to track it backwards now. So now all we need to do is press this button and it'll track backwards. There we go, so that's our first track done. Now we can do the next one. So this is going to be for the right wheel. So for this one, we do actually have a little marker here. Well, I mean, I guess it's a bolt that's holding in this wheel, but we can use it as a marker. And that being said, if you're recording this footage yourself, maybe add some tracking markers on the edge, which we can later composite out. That'll definitely help with your tracking in the masking. So if you're recording this footage yourself, you'll definitely have an easier job. But if not, not to worry, we're going to be using this marker here. So again, let's control and click, add a tracking marker. This one, I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger. And then move this up. And then again, let's track this forward. Now we can see it failed here. So let's go back a few frames and see why. So we can see as this foot moves over, everything gets darker and then eventually it just fails. So let's go back a few frames, clear the path. Again, press G twice, just move it down here, track this forward. 
I'm going to go back here because we need to track this backwards. So click this button and track it backwards. And again, anytime that it goes out of frame, you just want to go back a few frames, clear the path, press G twice, just offset it and then track it. And there we go. So now we have two tracking markers, we can move on to the next step, which would be masking. So we can change this from the tracking mode to the masking by going up here, changing it to masking. Or you can press the tab key and it'll just switch us over. Then at the top here, we can click new and create a new mask. I'm going to call this left, since this is going to be the left wheel. Now we don't really have a good view of this, so I'm just going to move to a frame where we see the whole skateboard, maybe somewhere near the beginning. So the idea is we need to create a mask which will sit around here so we can mask out this. So if we hold control and click, we can add this mask point here and then control click. I'm going to add a few more points and just go around. Then hold Alt and press C just to close this. Get something that lines up. So now we have our mask. What I want to do is select this tracking marker. So we can see it's selected because it's now white. Then I'm going to press A just so I have this mask selected. Then if we press Control P, this mask is now been parented to this tracking marker. So as we move through, we can see this mask actually moves along, which is good. Now, as I said, it's not perfect. So we do need to go through this now and tidy it up. So we're going to play through and animate this mask so this edge lines up and this wheel stays within the mask. Alternatively, what you could do is create a very simple square mask on here, make it follow the tracking marker, then create a garbage mask which would go around the skateboard and then composite it in that way. So yeah, I'm just going to use one mask in this example. You can do it however you want. It's entirely up to you. The process is pretty much the same except for the compositing at the end. So the first thing we can do is go down to this button and turn it on, which is the automatic keying. It'll add a keyframe every time we change something. So since we're happy with the mask on this frame, I'm going to press A, then I'm going to press G, and then hit enter. And what that does is just add a keyframe for all of these points. Now we can move forward a few frames, and anytime it moves, since we have all of it selected, I'm going to press G, and then press Y, just to constrain it on the Y axis. And then just move this up into position, and then jump forward. And again, jump forward a few frames and keep moving it up. And we want to make sure that this wheel does not go outside the mask. We want to make sure it stays within the mask. Keep jumping a few frames forward. And how many frames you jump forward is entirely up to you. Um, you can jump five frames, 10 frames, three frames. It's entirely up to you. I would say the more effort you put in and the less frames that you jump, the better your mask will be. So if you're working on a project that's quite important, maybe take your time just so it all looks better. So I'm gonna go through this now and just keep jumping forward, keep moving it around, and yeah, keep making sure that this wheel does not go outside the mask. So I will speed this up so you guys don't have to wait around and watch me do this, and I'm not doing anything different. I'm just moving these points around, and yeah. So I'll be back in a second. So that's the first mask done. It only took a few minutes to do that. Now we can jump on to do the next one. So I'm gonna do the same thing and create a mask for this one. So let's create a new mask, call this right. And then again down here, I'm going to control and click. Just a nice big area around here like this. Alt C, close the mask and reposition this. So something like that. Make sure you select this tracking marker here. Press A to select all of this. Then hold control and press P. Now we can see it's been parented. And now we just need to do the same thing, jump a few frames ahead and keep repositioning this when it starts to slide. So as I mentioned before, uh, this foot here actually will get in the way of our mask. So we can see it comes down and then just kind of invades our mask, which we don't like. So what you could do is just jump back and then when the foot comes in, you could just actually mask around it if you want. And then just keep masking. I'm just going to go back or as I mentioned before we can create a garbage mask which again is just a separate mask uh, masking around the foot so I will create a garbage mask for this foot in a second but for now I'm just going to kind of follow this line and pretend that the foot doesn't come down so keep jumping a few frames forward and keep trying to line this up with the skateboard not the foot so keep jumping a few frames everything looks okay 
So I'm just going to speed through this and hopefully you guys uh, get the idea by now. So there's the second mask. I'm going to create one more, which is for the garbage. So now we have our three masks. We can move on to the compositing, which in my opinion is the best part. So let's go ahead and click this compositing tab here. Then I'm going to press T, get rid of this. Click use nodes. Uh, let's get rid of the render layers. Don't need it. Shift A, go to input, add a movie clip. Go ahead and select the movie clip that we've been working with. Then connect this up to the composite node. Then we can add a viewer node. We could shift A, go to output, add a viewer. Or if we hold control, shift and left click on any node, it will connect a viewer node and also add one if there's not one in the scene. So now we have a background, it's far too big. Let's go to view. Then if we go down to fit and click this button, we can see it now fits the background to our view. And then one more thing I want to do, we can see that this is now using Filmic. I want to use the standard color space. So go to render properties, then down at the bottom, down to color management. We want to change the view transform from Filmic back to standard. And again, if you want to use Filmic, go ahead and use Filmic. That's entirely up to you. So when you've arranged things and you're happy with everything, let's go ahead and move on to the compositing. So there are two ways to do this. There's the normal way, which is the harder way. It takes a little bit longer. Or there's the quick and easy way, and I'll show you both methods. So the first way to do it, as I said, is the normal way. We can just shift A, color, mix, drop this in, connect this up to the viewer node, and then take the image, plug this into the second image slot. Shift A, go to input, add a mask. Uh, this is going to be the left one. And then plug this into the factor. And then if we shift A, go to distort, transform, drop this onto the bottom string. And then if we move this on the X, we can now see we're halfway to our Marty McFly. <laughs> So again, it's not hard at all. It's just adding a few nodes um, and moving it over. We could add a bit of blur to this. So shift A, filter, blur. And then we want to drop this between the mask and the mix node. Somewhere like this and give this maybe 10. So you can see it's a lot softer and that will do the job. So yeah, it's maybe not necessarily hard, but it's a longer way to do it. So what I'm going to do is just select these three and delete them. I'm going to keep the mask. Now the easier way to do it is to use the Darkfall VFX nodes add-on, which is a free Blender add-on. And if you want to check it out, there will be some videos up here you can check out, or there's a link in the description which will take you to our blog. But once you have the VFX nodes add-on, you just press N, then go down to Darkfall VFX nodes, and then we're going to go down to Tools. And for this one, we're going to be using what's called a clone node, which is essentially the same effect that you saw there, just in one node. So click this. And it will add this one node, drop this in, connect it up to the viewer node, and there we go. So for the mask, it goes into the clone mask, like so. And again, we just need to move this on the X. So I'm going to move this over like this, just push this out of the way, just until we don't see it anymore. There we go. And then we can add some feather. So again, maybe around 10. Right. And you don't want to go too crazy with this feather amount since it's only a small area. So now we can do the same thing for the right wheel. Again, we can click the clone node and add a new node. Or you can use the shortcut, which is Control A, and add this menu here. Go to Tools and add a clone node. There we go. So again, just drop this in. And we'll also need another mask. So let's duplicate this, Shift D. Let's change this to the right mask. And then we can plug this up to the clone mask. And again, move this over. I'm going to move this into the opposite direction. So to the right side. And keep doing it until it disappears. And there we go. We've now got a hoverboard. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Now, right off the bat, it looks good. It looks perfect. But if we play through this, if we jump to different frames, we want to make sure that these lines actually stay lined up. Let me just jump through and find a frame to show you what I mean. So you can see it around here a lot more. So I'm just gonna zoom in. So it's very noticeable that they actually don't line up. Now, whereas other frames they do, where here it doesn't. It's not hard to fix. What we need to do is just change the position of the Y. So let's go back to our first node. Let's tidy this up. So this is the right wheel here, and this is the left one. So if we move this down a bit, 
we can see it now lines up, although the back one doesn't. So the idea is now just to add a keyframe each point. So press I, add a keyframe. Then if we jump forward a few frames, see how it looks. Keep going. So we can see it's actually slowly moving out of position. So I'm going to move this back into position. So move it back up. And since we have automatic keyframes enabled, every time I make a change, we can see it's now added a keyframe for us. So I don't need to press I. So I'm just going to keep jumping forward a few frames. And we can see now again, it's not lining up. So just move it a little bit. And there we go. So it's just time consuming. Um, it's not too difficult. We just need to make sure it still lines up. And if it doesn't, just move this value here. And then keep jumping forward. So there we go. Now the left one is done. We can move on to the right one. We also need to add a little bit of blur. When we zoom in, we can see it's a lot more noticeable, this line. But if we just add maybe 10 on the feather amount, we can see it blurs it quite nicely. So what I'm going to do is going to select this node. Then I'm going to jump to around here. Uh, maybe a bit more. So again, just as we did before, just make sure it lines up on the Y. Add a keyframe the first time. And then just jump through and keep playing around the position until it lines up and you don't get this error. <laughs> and again, take your time. And then again, you want to go forward as well. Make sure these all line up. We can see it's now out of position since we moved it around. So just keep going through and animating these values until you get something that you're happy with. One more thing I should mention if we zoom back in. If you remember, we created a garbage mask for the foot. So let's go ahead and add this in. So we could either Shift A, add another mask, or we could just copy this one here. So Shift D, open this up and change this to the garbage mask. And then plug this into the garbage mask slot. And then we can see straight away, it brings this foot right back in. And if you needed to, you've also got the garbage feather here. So maybe something really small, just give a nice feathered edge here. So again, if you have any garbage stuff that you don't need, just plug in the mask and there we go. So now we have this effect done, we can move on to color grading and anything else you want to add in. But when you're happy with it and you want to render this out, if you have the VFX node add-on, just go to render settings, change all the things that you want to change, like file output, file format. I'm going to change this to an FF MPEG video, change this container to MPEG4. And again, if you want to change this back to Filmic, go ahead and do that. And then go ahead and hit render video. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.